Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Yetunde aka YBA and in today's video I'll be talking to you about things you definitely have to talk about before you get married. So before you say I do, watch this video, okay? Stop for a minute. <laughs> He's proposed to you, you've proposed to him, you guys have decided to get married and you're feeling so excited and really, 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 really happy about the next chapter of your life. I am so happy for you. Congratulations. Now, before we get into the business of today, I just want to say thank you so much for everyone who has subscribed, who has watched, who has liked, who has left me a comment, who has shared my videos. I as in i absolutely love all of you thank you so much Mwah. now into the business of today you know when you're you're in a relationship and with someone whether you know uh you're just dating or you've just met them or it's been a long-term relationship and you know it's just time to move things to the next level there's so many things that we are supposed to talk about now. Not a lot of people have these conversations. And I think this sort of accounts to some of the reasons you hear that people break up right after maybe they get married. Some of these issues will rear their heads and it's even, it doesn't even take time before it starts to show up in your marriage. Marriage is not dating. Like when you're dating or when you're in a relationship, call it what you like, committed relationship even got entanglement whatever it is you're doing marriage is a whole different ball game i don't know what happens i don't know maybe it's the signing of the paper it's the contract of it all or maybe it's just the fact that you know you're now in this for life it changes up the dynamics of your relationship let me tell you even if you're living with your partner you guys have been doing all the marriage things and then you decide to get married once you marry things definitely change up on you a little it's like a mental shift you can't escape it it's the real thing it's staring you in the face it's serious now you know you can't just up and leave even if you're already married i still believe that you can talk about these things because there's really no too late time i mean i like to believe that if you're married your goal every day is that your home your marriage your union will be better so the first thing you need to talk about before you get married is money finances money and money is such a big issue i don't even know why you would get married to anybody and not talk about money like do you realize that in fact most people believe that you either marry for love or for money and even people that marry for love self they will tell you that love is not enough you need money money is how is what enables us to move around that's how you pay for where you live that's how you eat that's how you do anything even the marriage itself go go the wedding how are you going to pay for it money and honestly i'm using money loosely i think i'm just going to use the word finance and i'm going to break it down into certain things you need to talk about things like your income how much are you both earning you need to talk about debt yes are you owing money did you take a loan from one bank or from one you know all these um, loan money people that are around now. The house you live in, is it is your own? Yes, but is it a mortgage? Are you paying for the house? Debt, you need to talk about it. I mean, I know if you're in America, some people have student loans. You know? So all of these things you need to talk about. You also need to talk about things like bills. You need to talk about your financial goals. Bills as in, what are the recurring bills that you have? Where is all the money going? When they make this money? What do they do with it? What percentage do they save? What are their financial goals? Uh, do you people want to buy a house in the next five years? Do you want to relocate? You need money for that. Is somebody planning to go for masters? Something, something, especially large projects. You guys need to talk about it. Where are you going to live? How much rent do you want to like? Do you want to pay? You need to also talk about seasons when one of you might not be earning money. That's how much you need to talk about money. What do you do if one income, source of income, just goes back? What's, as in, how are we going to treat our money? 
what are the things that we can we're going to do away with so number one thing that you have to talk about is money 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 you've heard them all money is the root of all evils money is also the root of plenty of happiness i know me if i get a lot now ah, i'm happy in a great mood especially if the money is for me like it's dash money ah it's all over i you know my shoulder pad everything just be like this so anyways money talk about money which brings me to my second item that you need to talk about and that is location now you see this location thing it, i have seen it cause problems in people's marriages when i say location where do you want to live where are you guys settling your family after you settle your family are you guys are you open to relocating sometimes people don't talk about these things then you coloring ah will you marry me yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. next thing you've gone to do introduction you've met your families you've set the ball rolling and then we're like okay so let's pay for you know our first house together our first home together and like no i'm not going to live there yes i'm going to live there no we're not going to live there you need to talk about it i know people who their goal from when they were young is they want to get out of nigeria like they don't even want to bring up their kids in nigeria they don't want to have they don't want to live here if you marry that kind of person and then all of a sudden you're like oh i want to contest for a local government chairman in, in our area uh, and she's like no wait uh, no we're, we're supposed to move to canada you're like oh no nigeria can be great again i'm here to be a counselor she's going to flip like guy what are you talking about i don't want to live here you have to talk about what are you going to do if one of you gets a job in another location this has also caused plenty problems in a lot of relationships traditionally what usually is expected is if the husband gets a job in a in another location most of the time the woman ex is expected to pack up and just follow the man but most of the time if it's the woman who gets a job in a different location men don't want to follow their wife don't let it be after five years of marriage three kids in or two kids in bam you get uh, a letter that you need to leave the country to move to a certain location and then mr man says why would you think i'll move with you and then you guys start struggling who's going to hold the kids or oh, do i have to go with the kids alone how are we going to and that, that's it the family starts to disintegrate so you have to talk about your location temporarily permanently where do you guys want to live where is your base going to be talk 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 about location it's very important now this one i want to talk about it's having children this having children or not having children yeah let me put it like that having kids or the inability to have kids what are you going to do now when we were in marriage class i remember this particular topic at our uh, at the church the couple who took this particular point they were a couple who had been married for about 12 or 13 years and they didn't have any kids and they didn't we didn't know as a matter of fact we didn't know they were a couple so the woman came first she took the first class and then the following day the other the man came and then the third uh, class that was when they came together and then that was when we realized that oh they are actually a couple and then they told us and you know one of the most beautiful things I think they did for us was they didn't we didn't know they didn't have kids at first so when they took the class they talked to us about oh what would you do you know how many kids do you want to have have you guys talked about it so you know there was this form that we passed around everybody wrote down their notes do you know that they're there and there in marriage class <laughs> There were couples who wrote different number of kids down. I remember when I just met my husband, when he asked me, how many kids do you want to have? I said, six. <laughs> yes, I know. I said six. I changed my mind. Mm -mm. So you have to talk about, do you even want kids? I know people who don't want kids. Haven't you read all those stories on all these uh, blogs on Instagram where people write in and you hear that, oh, my husband said I must terminate pregnancies because he doesn't want any more children. Or, oh, my, I, I, I remember reading. And, you know, usually it's the women people always talk about. I remember reading about a man who wrote in, uh, into one of those blogs and said that 
he didn't want children and his wife is trying to make him have kids and he doesn't want kids and it's not just that man i have met i know somebody that's like my my friend who doesn't want children and he's a man so it's not only women that tend to change their mind because maybe biologically we're the ones who get to carry the babies. Some people don't want children. And you know the funny thing about people who don't want kids that I have no? They're usually great with kids. Like they're the coolest aunties, uncles, and whatever, but they don't want them. So if you go and end up with someone who, you, because you just assume, ah, he's always playing with my little niece. He's always playing with my nephew. Ah, he's the coolest uncle to his niece and nephew. Oh my God, look at him. Huh. Someone can love children, but they don't want to have them, like personally. So you need to ask this person before you go into a marriage with them, a permanent situation with them. You need to talk about. And then, even when they want kids, how many? How many? And today, from what I know, you also need to talk about gender. I know people that if they don't get, if they don't have a boy, they will not agree. All I'm saying is you have to have these conversations. You also have to talk about what if we can't have kids. I have friends till date who are still struggling with fertility. I also know someone, I have a friend who tried all of this trying to conceive, then decided to adopt. And I remember adoption fell through a couple of times before they were finally able to adopt a kid. You have to talk about children, having them, not having them. If you can't have them, what are you going to do? What are your options? Which brings me to my next item that you need, definitely need to talk about. And that's your in-laws and, you know, boundaries, your friends. See, marriages have scattered that it has entered bush because of boundaries. And I say in-laws because, of course, the first thing that happens when you marry is you... you now belong to a new family or you have additional family from your wife's side or your husband's side. Now, with in-laws, things can be very tricky. You know, in our society, our traditional societies, most of us in our tribes and cultures, we have all sort of expectations, especially of the woman. The expectations of the man, no? There are some cultures where the man is almost even expected to even build house for his in-laws. He's supposed to basically start taking care of all the like me now that i have younger ones my husband is supposed to be taking care of everybody paying their school fees there are people who are like that in their culture if you marry somebody like that and then you start doing face like mm? no 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 i don't want to pay school fees you will pay or you will fight because you didn't do your findings before you went to go and marry that person your partner might not mind you not doing it but her people or his people have expectation of you so you have to be careful you know talk about these things now i know that you know the thing about when you have in-laws is that you and your partner might actually want something different from expectations from family and um, the, the traditions and the culture this is where you know the part of your relationship where you people have to like be one if there's something that is expected of you guys and you guys don't want to do it like you guys have to have like a solid plan on how you're not going to do it the traditional way because let me tell you if you're going to get a lot of pushback and when you get a lot of pushback most of the time depending on the side of family that you're having problems with they will blame your partner boundaries in-laws your family your siblings oh my god a lot of times they pass boundaries so you guys have to talk about boundaries oh do we want our family members to live with us when we marry do we mind in fact when we say we want family to live with us how extended of this family are we talking about yeah the daughter of uncle of auntie can they come and live with us is it just our immediate siblings oh um if they live with us is it going to be a permanent thing or just on transit all of you know things like that you need <laughs> see these boundaries things then it's not just your in-laws your friends some people somehow their friends become problems in their marriages some there are men who don't like their wife's friends i know i have friends that i know at some point i found out that their husbands didn't really like me go figure your partner just doesn't like the kind of relationship you have with that person. So, you know how some people have besties, you know? 
I have plenty besties. I think that kind of disqualifies the whole bestie thing. Some people have like besties and they take this their bestie matter like so seriously. Like their bestie is at times even more important than their partner. If you're in a relationship with that kind of person and you mind that kind of arrangement, then you need to talk about it before you get married. Some people, they have this friend, they want you people to do things together with the friend all the time. You might not want that. Like, they always want to go on double dates, uh, double holidays, double this, double that. Uh, okay, me and this person, it's time for us to change our cars. Everything is sort of timed around that person. You need boundaries. If you, if you wants you in a relationship with that kind of person, don't wait until when you marry and think, hey, when we marry, you will change, you will stop this rubbish. No. She will not stop that rubbish because you didn't talk about it. You didn't say your mind and that in itself is an issue. At this point, I'm going to stop this video because it's getting too long and I'm just going to continue filming. I'm just going to do the part two and then we're going to talk about it. So before I leave to film part two, don't forget to like my video share it subscribe i need more subscribers and of course leave me a comment like i said i love comments i like us to talk about things and discuss these issues i know this topic is something maybe it might be sensitive for some people it might be triggering but i'm sorry if i'm triggering you but i really need us to talk it out let's do better why do we have conversations about stuff it's so that next time you know we make better decisions at times it's not even for you maybe you're able to advise someone to make better decisions and somehow slowly the world will be a better place so thank you so much for watching i'll see you in part two